With your help, the Los Angeles Community College District has embarked on a massive sustainable construction and renovation program that will transform its nine community colleges into state-of-the-art educational facilities for future generations, funded by Propositions A and AA and Measure J. The safe work that you will be doing here is important to meeting those future needs. As a team, we're committed to safety excellence and the goal of zero incidents. The Los Angeles Community College District considers safety a top priority, and it's important to show this commitment in all phases of construction. It starts at the top with LACCD's Executive Director for Facilities and Planning, Mr. Larry Eisenberg. Safety at the Los Angeles Community College District is really our most important goal. We want everyone to be safe as they do their work in our program. That means you go home the same way that you showed up in the morning to our job. We need everyone to take care of what they're doing and do it in an effective way. Wear the proper gear, watch for people around them, watch for people walking by and making sure that everything happens just as safely as possible. The Los Angeles Community College District must make one rule absolutely clear. If drugs are a part of your life, you will not be allowed to be a part of our team. It's required that the construction site be a drug-free environment with a drug testing program in place. Smoking is also prohibited by all personnel 30 feet from all college campus buildings. Access to the project site after normal working hours will be limited to adequately supervised and authorized employees, staff and management personnel. When driving on the project site, obey all speed limits and traffic laws. Park in specified areas only and do not block entrances or park in reserved spaces. The LA County Sheriff is on campus and will cite violators. Remember, you're working in a student-filled environment if you notice a situation that may impact a student, faculty, or staff member, or they alert you of a situation, report it to your supervisor immediately. You must comply with all safety rules and regulations when on LACCD property. A top 10 list of unsafe acts that occur on projects are, and in no order of severity, 1. Lack of proper fall protection where 6-foot fall or greater is present. Two, Extension cords with bare wires or missing ground prongs not taken out of service. 3. Guards not in place on machines. 4. Scaffold ladders that do not extend 36 inches above the scaffold landing. 5. Working on the top two rungs of a stepladder. 6. PPE not worn while working. 7. Wrong tools for the job being performed. 8 work area is not properly barricaded. 9. Poor housekeeping. 10. Improper use of ladders. That's why it's imperative that all personnel must understand there are safety standards that meet or exceed all guidelines set by federal, state and local agencies, including Cal OSHA. Prior to beginning any work, all personnel must be issued a temporary construction badge, which can be obtained by completing the following requirements. 1. Sign in at the general contractor's trailer. 2. Watch the safety video. 3. Sign the safety handbook acknowledgement page. 4. Receive the Build Safe sticker. 5. Take a picture and receive your badge at the sheriff's office. Badges must be turned in immediately to the general contractor after all work has been completed or at the completion of the project. To ensure the proper safety assessment for every task, the pre-task planner must be completed by the crew performing the task daily and when conditions or elements of the task change. The Los Angeles Community College District requires certain personal protective equipment for all personnel entering the site. Hard hats, hard toe footwear and safety glasses with rigid side shields are all required on site and shall meet the current ANSI standard. Safety glasses must also be worn under welding hoods and over non-safety prescription eyewear. And, depending on the task, specialized personal protective equipment may be required. Shirts with at least 4-inch sleeves shall be worn at all times, as tank tops are prohibited. 
Wearing the correct gear not only ensures your safety, but could also save you a fortune in potential injuries. The average cost for a mild head injury? 85000 The average cost of a construction hard hat? $15. The average cost of an eye injury? Up to $3,000 or more. The average cost of safety glasses? Less than $10. Your hearing is very important. That's why hearing protection must be worn whenever your work places you in a high volume situation. Where a fall hazard of six feet or more exists, contractors and subcontractors shall comply with a 100% fall protection policy. Fall protection must be used anytime employees are working, whether moving or stationary, at an unprotected elevation of six feet or more and any time personnel are in an area where a fall could occur from a surface that's not protected by handrails, guardrails, or another approved fall elimination device. Contractors must locate buried utilities before digging. Prior to excavation, all known owners of underground facilities in the area shall be notified by the contractor who will call the regional one-call notification system. When excavating, all excavations must be inspected daily by the contractor's competent person. The contractor must provide appropriate barricades, which include lighted barricades at night. The contractor shall post site access and warning signage, including emergency contact information. All contractor installed warning signs, signals and barricades must be removed when the hazard no longer exists. It's necessary to establish work area protection zones to protect personnel and the public when work is performed in areas where pedestrians or vehicles have access. Walkways and sidewalks must be kept free of construction materials, debris, dirt, tools, extension cords, welding leads and other trip hazards. These hazards must be suspended across walkways and sidewalks at a height greater than 8 feet. Where steel plates are used to bridge excavations or other similar type construction activities in walkways or sidewalks, the leading edges of the steel plates must be feathered with temporary asphalt or other suitable materials to prevent trip hazards. Keeping you safe on the job means never tampering or removing guards or grounding devices on power tools. Modified tools are prohibited, so always use the proper tool for the job and report all defective tools to your supervisor immediately. OSHA requires all companies to have every container or hazardous substance in the workplace labeled, tagged or otherwise properly marked with the identity of the substance and appropriate warnings. If you come in contact with any unknown substance or if you see a container that is not labeled, notify your supervisor at once. Remember, always obey all warning signs, place cards and labels. When an incident occurs, provide the best assistance possible to those who may need it and to ensure the safety of others that may be affected or acting as emergency responders. All personnel must be familiar with emergency first aid procedures and know how to report injuries and accidents. If someone requires emergency medical care, do not dial 911, but call the sheriff's office located on the campus you're working on. An industrial medical location will be identified for each college campus and all contractors' workers will be directed to the respective clinic for treatment. It may be necessary for you to evacuate the area when an incident occurs. This alert will be accompanied through site radio or verbal notification. Using the nearest exit, leave the area and report to the designated assembly point. Emergency exits must be available at all construction sites and panic hardware, where provided, must remain unobstructed. Should an incident occur, contractors shall perform an in-depth investigation and evaluate all incidents. Contractors will also conduct periodic and routine safety surveys of the project, in which the college project manager may participate. However, the contractor remains solely responsible to conduct the work in a safe manner. Hi, I'm Richard Robine. I'm a retired workers' compensation judge and I serve as the ombudsman for your union's ADR program. The Los Angeles Community College District Workers' Compensation Program Alternative Dispute Resolution, or ADR, is a system that is intended to provide better medical care and a more timely return to work while minimizing conflict. Your ADR program is overseen by a Joint Labor Management Workers' Compensation Committee established by the contractor 
the Los Angeles Community College District, the Building and Trades Council of Los Angeles and Orange Counties, and the signatory craft unions working on the Los Angeles Community College District Propositions A and AA Facilities Project Labor Agreement. Only physicians that have been approved by the Labor Management Committee may provide services in the ADR program. The authorized medical providers include physicians that also practice in the Union Health Trust programs. In this way, injured workers may obtain treatment from a physician they already know and trust. An important part of the ADR is the Ombudsman, who is chosen jointly by management and labor to assist injured workers, insurers, employers, and owners in resolving issues that arise. If questions arise or issues are disputed between the injured worker and the claims examiner, the Ombudsman is available to provide assistance. The Ombudsman is a former workers' compensation judge and is available by simply calling this toll-free number or can be emailed at ombudsman at aoeusa.com. The ADR is designed to expedite the resolution of problems by using a tiered, progressive approach. No matter what step of the proceedings, an injured worker always has the right to consult with legal counsel. However, the attorney may only become directly involved in the ADR program after a timely request for arbitration has been filed by the injured worker. Unlike the litigious state system where claims can take years to get to trial, the ADR claims will be decided within several weeks or a few months. You are a vital part of making this project a success and we're counting on you to do your part. We have put together a health and safety handbook that's going to help people understand how they can keep themselves safe but also how they can take advantage of the programs we put in place in the event that they're hurt. We want people to get healthy and get back to work as soon as possible. It's important that everybody make sure that they get a copy of the handbook and look at it as soon as possible. It's a really great document. It will help our program. It will help keep everybody safe.